Hey, welcome back, Knife Nerds and Everyday Care people. You have got to be watching this here. You have got to see this knife because this knife has been on my grail list from the very first time I ever saw it. It is um, a little bit ostentatious. It's thick. It's beefy. It uh, has uh, kind of a little bit of masculine vicissitude to it. And uh, I absolutely dig it. it. It is a perfect knife. No, not by any stretch of the imagination, but it is still a wonderful wonderful knife. And uh, I actually have to say that this one here is the Chavez Ultramar Rendition 229 uh, that has got that polarizing clip that everybody either loves or hates. And I happen to be one fellow who loves it. Now, I also want to say thank you so much to a fellow by the name of Sylvain. Uh, his last name starts with an R. He is from um, way back out east in Quebec, and he uh, sold me this knife, and he also sent along a little care package that came with it. It is a whole bunch of uh, stuff to taking out stitches and wrapping band, <laughs> wrapping uh, large gaping wounds. And I have to say, I don't know whether to say thank you or, or you're a bastard, but uh, <laughs> I gotta say thank you, man. It was a joke that was uh, that was taken in great spirit and. Uh, and I got to say, it made me laugh my ass off. And uh, if you guys are doing business with Sylvan out there in the old knife land, you've got nothing to worry about. Uh, he, feel free, Sylvan, to uh, send me a anybody who you want to do uh, a knife deal with. And if they're looking for a little bit of a vouch, the big connect, I'll give you one. All right. Let's go on to this here. This thing is comes in excellent packaging. I love the packaging. I love this uh, skull with this key thing. I'm, I'm going to have to hopefully one of these days I get to talk to this gentleman and say, hey, you know, where was the, uh, where did this come from? I would love to know. So you can see here it is a RDP229. Um, it comes in the dual tie and it does have dual clips. Now, I know that was a, a thing that a lot of people were, had an issue with this clip. They thought it perhaps was a little bit gauche. Um, and so you can get a regular clip that goes along with it. And they are both titanium hand milled clips uh, i just happen to really really like this and i liked it from the time that it first uh, i first saw one i thought it was absolutely excellent so let's have a quick look at that you can have a look of uh this skull is i think beautiful now there, there is this skull is a couple of different iterations there's longer ones there's ones that's got a little bit of teeth to it there's ones that have the the forehead uh, note the forehead screws in there they come from the inside so they they're completely uh flat there's no screws the uh, another one you can get to is one that doesn't have the eyes cut and cut out of it so this one does happen to have the eyes cut out i think i would have liked to have had the one that has the screws on the inside that are completely hidden but you know at this point in canada here you know beggars can't be choosers because these come from the states and even though they are not um i mean i really tried to flick this knife quite a bit and it doesn't seem like uh, the detent on here is nice and tight and uh, despite this being so so smooth and so such a weighty blade i haven't been able to get it just flicked by gravity but you never know you've got some crazy ass border guards out there who will look at this and just say well maybe let's confiscate this beautiful knife so we can put it in our pocket i don't know if they do that or not but oh well so she is uh titanium on both sides but let's go over a little bit of uh size comparison with a couple of other kind of big grail knives that i've wanted and i will be doing some kind of side to side comparisons of this coming up here is the zt uh 0, 0562 with a titanium on it um very a lot of people compare these two knives together i have to say both are excellent excellent knives and another grail knife of mine the spartaco uh ed champ tough uh, i gotta say tough is definitely the way to, to prescribe this knife as you can see that you've got uh it, it is a big beefy knife you can see if you put the two of them together here you're almost identical size between the zt and uh, the chavez and then if you take this tough you can see that it actually is just a little bit longer but you've got probably more cutting edge with the uh with the um chavez because this uh this Ed Shemp Tough has got this big, big old finger trail for getting fine work done to it. So it does lose a little bit there, but uh, both of them are excellent, big, big, tough knives. So let's go over some plain old stats on this. Take my glasses off because I have a hard time reading the screen. I need both bifocals. Oh boy. Oh, by the way, you out there, it is November. 
hopefully you guys are uh, growing your mustache and uh, I'll probably insert a picture here <laughs> with my mustache uh, you know what I, I'm an indigenous person so I have a really hard time growing facial hair so please nobody laugh all right so blade length 3.625 inches uh, really really right in that three and a half inch just a smidge longer I love that that size for EDC uh, the cutting edge length is three four five and I'm gonna measure that I think they just measure from here to here it I think it's longer than that we'll get to that down the road closed length is 4.625 inches long so it does is a beautiful size um, overall length is eight and a quarter 8.25 inches so it is you know just in that perfect EDC size now the blade material is an m390 stainless steel from bowler which is i guess the current kind of champ out there right now uh, or pretty darn close it, it is a top three steel in knife land for edge retention toughness uh sharpenability as well as stainlessness um, you know it's 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 an excellent excellent all-around knife steel made by bowler uh, the blade thickness is 0.157 to, uh, of an inch or 4 millimeters or 3.98 millimeters. So you might as well say 4. It is very, very beefy, but it doesn't look that way because it has a really beautiful uh, swedge in here. But you can see that this is such a complex ground knife. You've got a really nice deep hollow ground here. You've got this flat ground here on the tip. And then you've got a swedge to lighten it up a little bit and just to give it some looks. Now, if you could actually feel this hollow ground blade in this M390, you could feel almost that the edge here is thicker than kind of back here. It's, I, I would have to maybe get a, like some really sensitive micrometer on there to find out if that's the actual truth. But it's, if you're familiar with uh, the way that uh, Chris Reeves grinds uh, his hollow grind, this is very, very similar and it allows for an excellent slicing knife too really really great sniping knife now this does have of course it is four millimeters long at this flat spot here is going to be the thickest part and when you do hit some apples and you hit some cardboard and stuff it does seem to bind ever so slightly here in this little bit of a shoulder but if you're slicing some smaller things this is going to slice like like a dream absolute dream now now this blade here is a drop point very very similar to the tanto if you have show the tanto side by side you can see that there is a little bit of a right about here is where the tanto the tanto begins i really like this style of blade right now i would prefer this over the tanto and, that, and that's just my my own self um and i just think it looks better and i think it gives you a little bit more beef too as well on the uh on this one over the tanto don't get me wrong i, I definitely want to see some tantos out there and there's some manufacturers that make great tantos i just happen to think that this one is very very similar to this draw point all right so the blade ground is a compound it's a belt satin finish you can get this in a couple of different finishes you can get it into kind of a hand rub finish too as well for i think for 25 extra dollars and it is gorgeous this knife blade when i first opened it up first of all it is one of the sharpest or if not the sharpest knife that i have ever felt out of the box it was that sticky sticky sharp um i mean i uh kind of ran it over a diamond strop and it didn't do much to it because it was wickedly sharp but the, just the absolute the way the light catches this blade it is it is gorgeous it is a, a incredible work of art now this one here happens to be made in china riat makes this uh the chavez 228 is made in-house with them this would be considered perhaps maybe a mid-tech or very close to it uh but i i think you know um a chavez from the him in the states is you're looking you know 600 plus uh, where this one here in the states you're looking 375 so you're getting i think just as good a knife um perhaps a little more fine finishing touches on the in-house Chavez but hey Riyadh does a wonderful job with the fit and finish on here is absolutely 10 out of 10 the blade came centered the blade came incredibly smooth uh, it was a wonderful all the lines are very very crisp which is you know not necessarily a great thing it's a great looking thing but when it gets in your hand it does develop some pokey parts and we will go over that because there are some negatives to this too as well but not enough to for for me to uh dislike this knife uh, uh, for sure all right so uh satin so now the handle material is stonewashed titanium uh it is a frame lock here a reeves integral lock with a um uh, it's got a an over travel stop as well as a 
uh, steel insert, so you're not going to get any sort of uh, stick stones. You're not going to get any blade stick on this lock stick, and it and it's locking up at about you know maybe 15 percent. So there's a lot of for this route this knife to travel, and it is drop shut, and it makes such a beautiful beautiful sound. This is one of the best sounding knives that I, I have ever uh, taken and had the chance to own and put it in my pocket here. Listen. And that's the drop. So I don't know if that's something that's uh, important to you, but it is to me. The sound of the knife, I mean, there's been some knives out there that have thudded uh, and I thought, yeah, I don't know, I like it, but yeah. it's just one of those things, right? Now, uh, it does have bearings inside there and it does have two incredibly thick slabs of titanium in there. There's no milling inside there. There's no hollowing out. It's just unabashed brick that uh, if you can't uh, defend yourself with the pointy end of it, you can defend yourself with uh, by just using it to bash the hell out of somebody with it because it does have 6.5 ounces of weight to it. Um, the designer, like I said, is Ramon Chavez. It does have a titanium backspacer and uh, the titanium backspacer is fit perfectly in there too. Uh, there's no doubt that the fit and finish of Riyadh has been incredible at the top here too is, uh, also. Now, uh, would I recommend this? I think absolutely. If you're a knife guy, you definitely got to have this. Now, on to some of the little bit of uh, uh, bristles on here. One of them is that uh, the jipping on here is, you know, it's nice and thick and it's not going to really... Um, <clears throat> it does its job, it digs in, but it also digs in quite into your thumb. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's what, that's what jimping is supposed to do. It's supposed to be giving you some grip, but, it, you know, I've noticed a couple of times, and I've really barred down on this, that it really kind of hurt my thumb. And it just, I would just like to see some of this stuff just filed ever so slightly or chamfered just to stop that little pokey. And that goes with a lot of the other edges here, too. Uh, this edge here was very, very sharp, and it really dug into my hand a lot. So now I am going to keep this knife. Uh, there's no doubt about it. This is not going to be a safe queen. I've already developed a few snail trails on here. So I just took a, a piece of wet, dry sandpaper, and I just took it along the bottom, and I just gave it a little bit of a rub and rounded it off just a smidge. Not so much that I'm taking a lot of material out there, but just enough that I'm breaking that line up a little bit, and it is not anywhere near as pokey as it was in, my, in the palm of my hand. And the other thing here is, what the hell is it with some guys not putting a <clears throat> a uh, lanyard hole on here or lanyard something on here that I can tie a lanyard on? I am missing a lanyard so much on this. So much so that I am going to either invest in a piece of titanium or aluminum or micarta and I'm going to actually... Um, have some very good friends of mine who are machinists and I'm going to get them to machine me a new piece and either um, put a hole in there where I could have a little swivel placed in there to tie a lanyard or a little bit of a, a, a lump here somewhere like a little O where I could just tie a lanyard in uh, or if I replace this I might just drill a hole in here and I drill a hole in there and just run the lanyard right through there in the corner. You know, just drill a hole that way. I won't do it in the stock uh, backspacer, but I may just get, say, the aluminum one put in there, just try it out and see if I can drill a hole in there that I'm not going to be hitting into the blade end there so I can have my lanyard um, in there. You can see that there should be lots of room for me to drill a lanyard hole through the corner of an aluminum uh, spacer in there. And so just overall, <clears throat> despite these few little rough patches in this knife uh, and that's one of the things when when uh steven said uh, or stefan i apologize sorry 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 sir stefan when he uh, said you got the knife how would you think of it and you know i'd had a couple other friends warn me that hey i had uh, uh my heart set on, a, on a, a chavez and when i got it i was slightly disappointed you know i had maybe built it up so much in my mind and i did i built this knife up for years and despite the few little issues that i said that to him i said I said something along the lines of, oh, besides it, uh, a few issues, I absolutely love it. And he was a little bit like taken aback. He's like, oh, well, the knife is perfect. And I, and I wasn't blaming him. No way, no way, Jose. I was just saying that, you know, that little bit of pokiness here, that little bit of, you know, pokiness there, just things like that, <clears throat> that are a, not a, a condition, uh, not a problem, but a condition of the manufacturer. And that is far from anybody else's, um, uh, any seller's uh, hands other than Riat and uh, Ramon Chavez. So, 
<clears throat> that's all I meant. Now, despite these little flaws on them, and they are some flaws. I mean, this here, people can think that that's a flaw or they can think that it's a great big bonus. These crisp lines, people could think that's a flaw or think that's a bonus in a manufacturing. And this great, you know, this jimping in here, people can think those are a flaw or a bonus. To me, I happen to think they're flaws and I'm gonna overlook this knife and I'm gonna give this knife a 10 out of 10 because I am so damn excited to have this. And I think that this is an excellent, excellent knife. And I'm going to wear the hell out of this for a long time. It has actually kicked this out of my pocket. This ZT was just an unbelievable. And it's got all the things that uh, this knife doesn't have. You know, a spot where I can tie a lanyard. It's got the flipper, which I like. You know, it's got everything that's really smooth in it. And it's, you know, there's no hot spots and no, no, no pokey spots on it. It's got all those. But what this has is attitude, um, truculence, <laughs> and style. And uh, right now, that is exactly what I'm looking for. So, if you're going to get yourself one, beware. It is not a perfect knife, but damn it, it is a gorgeous hunk of steel and a hunk of titanium. So, please, please stay safe out there. Please keep your stick on the light. Oh, don't forget, if you like what you saw here, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe and don't forget to help me share my voice. And I think when we hit 1,500 subs... Uh, I'm going to be, uh, you know what, let's make that, I, I had said originally 1,500, but let's make it 2,000. When I hit 2,000 subscribers, I'm going to give you my whole collection. So my collection's a little bit light right now. I've sold a few things. So I want to build it back up for 2,000. At 2,000 subs, we're going to give you a whole brand new, or not brand new, a whole, all the collection here. We'll throw it up. We'll go one by one. So please, please keep your stick on the ice. The shiny side up. This is the Big Knucker saying adios.